Combing through the map of Africa has always intrigued me. This is the most western part of the continent, a land where entire islands are made entirely from millions of seashells, a country sometimes called the Peanut King because it's one of the world's largest producers of peanuts, evidenced by mountains of peanuts during harvest season, and Gori Island and its door of no return is a constant reminder of the final exit point of millions of slaves. What is Senegal if not the land of remarkable diversity? You see, to the many wonders of Senegal, this could arguably be the most outstanding. You see, Mother Nature has mixed things up here by adding not only a complex biological cocktail but a dash of flamboyant pink in the mix. If you head one hour east of metropolitan Dakar, just on the periphery of Senegal Kapvat Peninsula, you'll reach Lake Retba, aka La Crosse, better known as the Pink Lake, which as the name suggests is far from typical because it has to be seen to be believed. The reason the lake is pink is because it is one of the saltiest bodies of water on earth. It is unlike the unremarkable stories of most unremarkable lakes because what sets it apart is its incredibly high salt content that will have Salt Bay grinning with envy. Separated from the Atlantic by a narrow dune, the shallow lake is so densely laden with salt that as in the Dead Sea, swimmers easily float around like feathers. To put that into perspective, the water at this 3 square kilometer lake is more than 11 times saltier than the water in the world's oceans, which have a salinity of approximately 3.5%. This lake, with a whopping 40% salinity in some areas, contains bacteria that can only survive under this peculiar condition and give off a pink color when absorbing sunlight. On the shores of the lake, miners prepare their boats before they venture deep into its famed waters to harvest salt. They rub on their bodies a butter made from shear nuts found in West Africa to protect their skin from blisters and tissue damage due to the salty water which is also known to exceed 37 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. They spend between 6 and 8 hours a day in the water but being among the first to dive in is the trick of reaping big. The men dig salt from the lake bed with shovels or by diving down and heaping it by hand or bags. They depend on the buoyancy of the lake to lift the heavy basket back to the surface and then pour the salt into a traditional boat. Each man harvests 1 to 1.5 tons of salt every day, depending on the time of the year. The harvest is then ferried back to shore, where women wait to carry it to drying piles just by the lakeside. It can take up to 200 trips a day from the boat to the mound for some of the carriers. In the blistering midday heat, men and women shift between piles of salt, transporting, drying, iodizing and stacking sacks before they are traded. The newly iodized salt is not only a health benefit but also increases the sale value of each ton of salt from 22,000 CFA francs or $35 to 32,000 CFA francs or $51. Over 70% of it is exported around West Africa, raking in significant direct earnings for the people who work at the lake and in turn boosting the country's $27 billion economy. The lake and these chunks of white crystal have long been the focal point of Senegalese culture and economy. The region's historians estimate that locals have consciously harvested salt from the lake for hundreds if not thousands of years. Today, it is estimated that 3,000 people work around this lake, 2,000 men and 1,000 women who collect about 120,000 tons of salt each year. However, the salt industry in the country could be more developed. The small-scale miners, for instance, lack the appropriate mining gear or equipment. Investment in the industry could further inject more revenue into the economy, which is the largest salt producer in West Africa, mining almost half a million tons every year. Small-scale harvesters who work in areas like Lake Retba are responsible for around 30% of the country's production. Senegal's economy is set to expand the most in sub-Saharan Africa in 2023, according to a forecast by the IMF that compares with the projected sub-Saharan African growth of 3.7% the same year. But there's another reason locals and visitors alike have long been awed by the body of water, 
dubbed the Dead Sea of Africa. It is hauntingly beautiful. At specific times of the year, visitors motivated by a love of both natural beauty and the perfect Instagram shot come to witness this entrancingly alien landscape of the pink-hued waters. I believe this is why it was often the finishing point of the Dakar Rally before the rally moved to South America in 2009. The lake is typically at its pinkest during the dry season between November and June, but the color fades during the region's wet season, July to October, when the salty waters become diluted by fresh rainwater. Lake Retba isn't the only body of water that looks like something out of a cotton candy dream world. You can find similarly bubblegum pink bodies of water around the world, from Lake Hillier in Australia to the Salinas de Torrevieja in Spain to Pekelmere on the Caribbean island of Bonaire and back to Africa to Lake Natron in Tanzania. If you liked this video and you're open to having some better understanding of Africa, don't forget to subscribe to Reason Africa. Every single video will make you realize just how much more there is to know about the continent. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.